In 2008, one of the most outrageous examples of political correctness run amok unfolded on the small college campus of Indiana University, Purdue University, Indianapolis, or IUPUI. Custodial worker and part-time student, Keith John Sampson was accused and found guilty of racial harassment of his African-American co-workers for the simple act of reading a book. That's right. At IUPUI, the Affirmative Action Office has determined that it's possible to racially harass someone by silently reading a book. Keith John Sampson is a janitor and a student at IUPUI, and on his break, he was on his own time reading a book which apparently some of his co-workers considered uh, an offense and they considered the book was harassing them. Keith Sampson is a, a student janitor, uh, just credits away from, uh, from getting his degree, and he was reading a book, um, and he was found guilty without a hearing of racial harassment for reading that book. My name is Keith John Sampson. I'm a communications studies student. I've been going to school here off and on for 20 years, and uh, four years ago, I took a job as a janitor on campus full, to work full time to pay for my books and living expenses. My habit would be on my work breaks, my lunch break and my uh, time off, would to sit, be to sit and read. A lot of people do that. Some people will read the newspaper, um, people read the Bible, just whatever they want, cosmopolitan. And so uh, my enjoyment would be to sit there and read literature. The book was Notre Dame versus the Klan. It celebrated the defeat of the Klan in a 1926 riot. And even though he tried over and over again to explain that this book is actually celebrating the defeat of the Klan, he was found guilty of racial harassment nonetheless. Keith Sampson's troubles all started when an African-American co-worker witnessed Keith silently reading his book. She came in the break room and saw me reading the book. And she mentioned to me just casually that she didn't like the Klan. And I agree with her. I said, I agree. I said, the Klan was terrible. And I, I tried to, I thought it was a segue to talk about the book. I said, that I didn't know that they had ruled Indiana. And, and so I thought that was the end of it. She didn't say anything more. She may have been offended by the book, but she certainly didn't say anything to me. Um, there was no conversation. There was no questions ever put to me. Why are you reading this book on the Klan from her? My name is Todd Tucker. I'm the author of Notre Dame versus the Klan. Uh, it's a book that describes a riot that took place between the students of Notre Dame and members of the Ku Klux Klan in May of 1924. I don't think the contents of my book are, are controversial at all. I mean, it's about a historical episode that happened in Indiana. So, you know, I, I think that it was just one of the other employees was, was offended by the, you know, the, the imagery on the cover, which there are burning crosses and cl robed Klansmen on the cover. And so, like I said, they just said, well, okay, we, we declare this to be racial harassment and, you know, no argument can sway us. All she could see on the cover was KKK or Klan, and she took exception to it. A complaint was filed with the Affirmative Action Office, and Keith John Sampson was ordered to appear. I had no trepidation about going there. I brought the book with me. I thought, these are educated people. They will know the difference between somebody that is in the Klan as a opposed to somebody who's trying to educate themselves on what the Klan stands for. I brought the book in, I met with this woman, uh, Marguerite Watkins is her name, and we sat down and we had a conversation. She asked me, you know, about the book. I tried to show her the book. I pro-offered the book to her. She didn't seem interested in looking at it. I knew I was in a little bit of trouble when she started looking away, not making eye contact anymore and yawning. It was as if she had already made up her mind. It bothered me greatly that the Affirmative Action Office didn't, didn't want to know and didn't care about kind of what Keith's motives were with the book. Their, their stance seemed to be that uh, it's, it's racial harassment if we say it's racial harassment and you know, don't bother us with the facts. A few weeks later, I received a letter in the mail saying that I was found guilty of racial harassment for repeatedly reading the book, Notre Dame versus the Klan, How the Fighting Irish Defeated the Ku Klux Klan by Todd Tucker. Keith uh, wrote me a letter, and uh, I, when I first read it, I, I was certain that there must be more to the story, that it couldn't be as ridiculous as he described, but he enclosed the letter he got from the Affirmative Action Office at IUPUI, which made it pretty clear that his crime was reading my book. The Affirmative Action Office threatened, 
serious disciplinary action if Keith didn't change his reading habits to meet the AAO's repressive arbitrary standards. On review of this matter, we conclude that your conduct con constitutes racial harassment and that you demonstrate disdain and insensitivity to your coworkers. You used extremely poor judgment by insisting on openly reading the book related to a historically and racially abhorrent subject in the presence of your black coworkers. During your meeting with Marguerite Watkins, Assistant Affirmative Action Officer, you were instructed to stop reading the book in the immediate presence of your coworkers, and when reading the book, to sit apart from the immediate proximity of these coworkers. Please be advised any future substantiated conduct of a similar, similar nature could result in serious disciplinary action. There was no way he could rebut this. There was no, uh, there was no excuse. Uh, simply because people had actually literally judged a book by its cover, um, he would now have uh, racial harassment on his file forever. Now, it's important to understand how serious of a finding that is. If you have a racial harassment finding on your file, uh, people are going to assume you are actually uh, a part of the Klan or doing Klan-like actions rather than reading a book celebrating the defeat of the Klan. Um, so the university did this lightly, they did it without due process, and they really, uh, you know, potentially ruined a loyal student's career. I had tears in my eyes. I was crying because this was not me, and I didn't know how to explain to anybody that it was not me. I'm a communication studies student, and I couldn't communicate that I'm not a Klansman. And a moment later, I read the letter a second time that night, and I started laughing hysterically because I realized this won't stand. I mean, this, you know, this is not true, and I have to, st you know, um, speak out. Somehow I had to find a way to find allies. Keith reached out to the Indiana ACLU, who pressured the Affirmative Action Office to write a second letter to Mr. Sampson. It was a half-hearted attempt to back down without admitting any wrongdoing. The second letter was, was very ambiguous. It didn't mention the book. It just said they were unable to reach a final conclusion. It was the perception of your coworkers that you were engaging in conduct for the purpose of creating a hostile atmosphere of antagonism. If the conduct was intended to cause disruption to the work environment, such behavior would be subject to action by the university. However, because I cannot draw any final conclusion in this instance, no such adverse disciplinary action has been or will be taken in connection with the circumstances at hand. But why couldn't they draw a final conclusion? The final conclusion is that I was not committing racial harassment by reading an anti-Klan history book. That is the final conclusion. That's when FIRE, the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, came to the aid of Keith John Sampson. FIRE sees harassment abused time and time again by universities. Um, Op-eds get called harassment. Posters get called harassment. This is the first time that I've seen merely reading a book called harassment, which, uh, but uh, this harassment rationale gets used to justify speech codes and to justify uh, the punishment of the most innocuous speech imaginable. You cannot commit racial harassment for reading a book that is in their university's own library. It is impossible. I'm standing on the campus of IUPUI right now. I'm in front of the library, and uh, one of the many absurdities of this case is the fact that the very book uh, at issue in Keith John's case, this book right here by Todd Tucker, is available in the university's own library. So apparently the university uh, seems to have no problem with students reading this book on their free time and uh, doing things of that nature, but as long as it doesn't offend somebody who's nearby. I had no idea affirmative action would get involved to decide what books are acceptable by students or workers to read on a university campus. I mean, it's mind-boggling to think that, that they could get involved in that. It was this kind of willful, uh, this willful crusading ignorance at IUPUI that, and, and it was also very indicative to me, it was very clear to me that that office had far too much power and far too little oversight if they were comfortable sending a letter that was kind of that patently ridiculous. It's a case of stomping on his civil liberties and how anybody cannot be outraged by this is totally beyond me. And what is extremely uh, shocking is that no faculty member uh, and certainly no administrator who has any kind of influence in faculty governance on this campus has publicly deplored what has happened. Our job is to expose what universities are trying to get away with behind closed doors and to make sure that the public 
truly knows the shocking ways in which universities such as IUPUI treat their students, such as Keith John in this case. We covered it extensively on our blog, and as a result of that, his story was picked up pretty, uh, pretty heavily across the blogosphere. And after that, we uh, decided to write Chancellor Bantz here at IUPUI to, um, to request that the university do the right thing by Keith John, that they remove the harassment finding from his record, and that they apologize to him for the terrible way in which he was treated. I really believe if it wasn't for fire, I would have never received an apology letter from Chancellor Banch in July of 2008. Um, I won't read this whole letter, but the Chancellor does say, I want to offer you my apology for the problems associated with the letter you received in November from the Affirmative Action Office. I really believe in my heart, if it wasn't for fire, I would not have this letter to contradict this first letter that found me guilty of racial harassment. The president actually admitted wrongdoing. Um, that's something that, that we don't get uh, that often. So, uh, but of course this case is absolutely unforgivable. It, it is pretty shameful that it took a university months to, to finally openly admit that reading a book did not constitute harassment. And this, is, and, and this can be really disheartening in some ways, that universities have to be publicly shamed or sued into doing the right thing. I, I, I don't think it has to be this way, but uh, you know, FIRE will always fight when universities try to abuse their student rights like this. While FIRE was successful in their efforts to force IUPUI to apologize to Mr. Sampson, what did the administration do to ensure that nothing like this ever happens again? As far as I can tell, there's been no investigation of the Affirmative Action Office. There's been no investigation of Marguerite Watkins. Um, I, I have no ill feelings towards this woman that allegedly cannot read. I, I have no negative feelings towards her because I feel that she was used. Somebody was using her for their own agenda and somebody, I feel, was the Affirmative Action Office. What used to be the Affirmative Action Office is now the, uh, the Office of Equal Opportunity and Margaret Watkins is the Assistant Director within this new department and presumably holds the same powers and same uh, responsibilities that she had previously. Why is Margaret Watkins still holding a position of authority to where she can wield power um, over other people? At the very least, she should have been sent back to school. Now my fear is that this could happen to somebody else, whether it's a professor, a student, or a worker, something similar, of a similar nature, and they will be compelled to go before her. I will tell you right now, if I'm ever told to go before Marguerite Watkins again, I'm going to refuse. I will not cooperate with any investigation of me in the future of any subject re re related to books, what books I'm reading. If you would like information on becoming a student at IUPUI, please visit their website at www.iupui.edu forward slash admissions. If you would like detailed information on this case, as well as many others like it, please visit www.thefire.org. Notre Dame versus the Klan can be purchased by visiting www.todtuckerbooks.com. Thank you.